Minnesota is a Dakota place. The signs are in the parks and trails we visit, the rivers and lakes we swim in, and the streets and neighborhoods we drive in. The book Minnesota Makoche by Gwen Westerman and Bruce White invite us, the everyday Minnesotan, to look closer and discover Minnesota's not-so-hidden past. The book has been nominated for a 2012 Minnesota Book Award in the Minnesota category. I think what's important for people to know is that we use Dakota language every day in the place names that surround us, whether it's Minnesota, the name of our state, or um, place names like Chas Chaske or Chaska, Minnesota, or Shakopee, which is Shakpe, Winuna. In 1862, the Dakota fought against Minnesotans in what is known as the U.S.-Dakota War. The reasons behind the war and their outcome are widely debated, both among the Dakota and the descendants of settlers. One result of the war was a loss of Dakota history and culture. The book Minishota Makoche is trying to make that more well known. Uh, our purpose in doing this book was not to tell the story of 1862 because that's the story mm -hmm. about the Dakota that everyone has heard, but to tell the background of the Dakota in Minnesota to provide a, a different uh, context in which to view what happened in 1862. If you asked anyone in Minnesota, you know, particularly in the metro area, if you asked them what does the word Minnesota mean, 95% of the people wouldn't be able to tell you. Um, they would tell you, oh, it's an Indian word. There's a lot of important places in the metro area that are really important to Dakota people, which a lot of people don't really um, look at as Dakota places. You know, they're looked at. They're looked at as. Um, as simply, you know, cities and, and landmarks and, and their, their historical significance is, is attributed to, to military history or to settler history um, and less to the Dakota presence or, you know, the, the origin of the, the place as a Dakota space. For example, the St. Croix River had a Dakota name that meant where the fish lies. But there's a, there's a Dakota legend and, and interestingly an Ojibwe legend also. But they both tell the story of a, of a man who turned into a fish and then, uh, and then turned into a sandbar. And that sandbar is an existing sandbar right next to the town of Afton. Uh, there, there are lots and lots of places where we have marked the land with our language, yet, you know, in the day-to-day -day existence that we, that we have now, we don't really pay attention to what's around us. I mean, how many people do you know who've lived in a place all their lives, and you come to visit, and, they, and you say, well, I want to go see this landmark, and they're like, oh, well, we've never been there before. Um, it just is out of sight and out of mind because I think a lot of people who live here today just don't make that association that Minnesota is a Dakota place. You look at a place like Lake Calhoun, which historically was called Bade Makaska, White Banks Lake, um, and you know how many people know that Lake Calhoun had a name? And you know I know the history of my family, and my family had a village there called Hiato Tuwe in the 18. 1820s or 1830s. That village um, was laid, led by my grandfather, Machpia um, Wichasha, Cloudman. It's really important that we move forward from this sesquicentennial year and not mark everything by the war. Um, what we hope that Minnesota Makoche, the land of the Dakota, will do as, as a text, as a story, is let people know that there's more to this history, more to this place than just 1862. And that to move forward is to learn these stories, to hear these stories, and to begin to have a conversation about what it means to us as Minnesotans today and in the future. Eventually, those buildings are going to be gone, the Stone Arch Bridge is going to be gone, but the river is going to come back. And our stories will always be here, even though those man-made structures will eventually go away.